Okay guys, today I'm going to go through a little bit of information on the Shimano E-Tube software and how to tune your bike using that E-Tube software. So, if you read the post that I put on my blog on tailwind-coaching.com, you'll find all the detailed information for this, but a little bit of video is going to help you guys out a little bit. So, I'm using my iPad Pro here. Um, basically, this is what's going to run the E-Tube software, and this is what's going to basically give us the ability to tune our bike from this piece of equipment, right? So in order to do that, if you follow the directions on the blog, you can pop right over to the bike here, and as you can see underneath this, you can see where the junction box is. Now, if I push and hold this thing for a couple of seconds, it's going to put me into adjustment mode, right? So that red light puts it into adjustment mode. If I pop it out of adjustment mode, I can shift and nothing's wrong, right? All's good. Now, if I come over here, and I really want to take a look at this, and I want to, you know, uh, pop this open, I'm going to find my YouTube software, and I'm going to click. And I'll get the splash screen right here. Now, it's going to say now reading. I'm, I'm going to drop this thing out. This is the screen you're going to see. It's going to ask you to connect to Bluetooth Low Energy. Okay, cool. To do that, you push and hold for a second on there, not long enough to actually activate the um, the tuning mode on the DI2. But as you can see here, I've got the EW W101. All right, that's the the piece of equipment that I'm using. And if I get right down low. Right on here, you can see where that piece is, that um, that device. It's tucked right in front of my front derailleur. But I can connect to that, and for some reason, it's already told me it's already going to go and do that. Um, no, it won't. Uh, it actually dropped out. That's why. I hit EW101, and there we go. You guys are going to get some glare, I know. I apologize for that. Get rid of some of that, that glare. Garage is a little bit dark, so it's going to be tough to see. But I'm going to do my best. All right. Are you using the Sprinter shift switch on the 9070 left side? I certainly am. Am I using it on the right side? I certainly am. So now I'm going to come upon the main screen. Right? The main screen is going to give me a couple options. I can either customize, I can update firmware, I can error check, or I can check presets. Um, in this case, there are a couple updates, so I'm going to go to the updates here, and I'm going to take a look. And surprisingly enough, the junction, the front junction, the EW90A, and the Bluetooth battery all have an update to them. Um, if you want, you just hit that update now button, and that takes care of most of that issue and the update goes through usually without any kind of problem. If I go back to the main screen, I can customize. I can customize the switches. So the, the um, Dura-Ace, the 9070 units that I'm using, I can actually tap that, and I can change. So I, this top switch here, I can change the computer buttons. I can change this shifting up and down. I can restore default values. I can do synchronized shift, but I want to go back. Multi-shift, another nice handy tool. All right, multi-shift speed settings. It gives you a whole list of stuff on how to handle it and how to look at it and, and what you need to do, but then you can change it. Now, multi-shift on or off, which I do have, is it shifting very fast, fast, normal or slow? And this is an interesting one, the number of gear limit. Um, no limit, two gears, three gears. I've tried them all, I like the no limit, so I can actually just kind of hold that button down and it continues to shift all the way through until I let go. So that's a nice little tool. Uh, shift mode, if I go and look at shift mode, um, it's going to require different firmwares. It's fine, and it's going to change that. What that's going to do, shift mode is actually your synchronized shifting. Um, and that's something that I don't really want to play with right now because I'm perfectly happy being able to control whatever I want off the top of my head. Firmware updates, of course, error checks. You can check errors on any of these pieces of equipment, and by hitting the start button down here, you can really determine is there any kind of problem with any of the attached pieces of equipment. 
So if for some reason your rear derailleur is malfunctioning, your front derailleur is malfunctioning, um, you suspect there might be a problem charging with the battery, you can actually check the battery, you can pop over here and you can do a test on it and you can select start. Um, you can select two pieces, you can select the battery in the junction. Um, if you really wanted to, to figure out, well, why does my, you know, why are my shifters acting up? Are they doing something funny? You can check them for issues as well. Not a bad thing to do or you can set them all. You can do that after a crash as well just to make sure. Um, you can load settings from specific bikes in order to change specific bikes and set um, um, set different settings on different bikes that you can keep handy and just swap them back and forth. Uh, very handy if you have multiple bikes and you want to continue moving things along. Um, in this case we can update the firmware so we can hit the download button here and it's going to go through the whole update process. And as you can see down on the bottom it's updating the front junction box first. It's going through you know 15 percent it'll mow right on through that until it's complete. Now why is this why is this system such a great system to work with well this system is really nice because previously the previous iterations of you know the shimano di2 system required you to basically plug your junction box you know over here into a computer in order to make those adjustments now by using the proper pieces of equipment you know you have you have this this a junction here um, your battery in the seat tube is DI2 compatible, uh, or I shouldn't say DI2 compatible, it's obviously DI2 compatible. It's, um, your battery in here is Bluetooth compatible, and of course the Bluetooth sending unit, which I have down here. Uh, at this point, some bikes have them actually tucked under the bottom bracket, which is really the ideal place for it. But all of these things are Bluetooth compatible, so now you can actually update firmware you can change settings, you can do diagnostics using your iPad or your iPhone. I believe it works on iPhone as well. But the simplicity of it can't be understated because now you can actually do most of the maintenance work on any DI2 system, whether it's Altegra DI2, whether it's Dura-Ace DI2, like, you know, whether it's a mix, these are 9070 di2 shifters uh dirt a shifters with you know 6770 derailleurs so you know you, you can mix and match anything you can test it to see that it works uh you can update firmwares to see if it works you can find issues and problems with each firmware setting um, it's a fantastic tool to have and it's a great tool for the home mechanic to really be able to take you know control of their system if you have a mountain bike, you can actually update and take care of mountain bike you know, components as well with this. Um, if you are doing multiple road bikes or you happen to be a mechanic, say for a team, you can actually work on all your team bikes using this system. As long as they have a Bluetooth compatible setup, you can work on any Shimano Di2 bike as long as you can connect to that Bluetooth system. Bluetooth sensor. Um, so here you go, all the firmware is up to date. Something that's worth pointing out is this, you can hear me hitting the buttons, this system will not work if it's in Bluetooth mode and that's a very important thing to note because the first couple of times I did this and I would attempt to shift thinking okay I'm gonna just check it and make sure it still works, I panicked because it wasn't shifting. Well it's not gonna shift because it's actually in Bluetooth mode. If I go over here and I Disconnect the Bluetooth. I don't know if you can hear it very well. Uh, if I go to the front, you can hear it shift fine. And once again, I can hit the Bluetooth connection. Here's the 101. Um, and it should connect itself right back up. You can follow that blue bar right up here as to it getting, uh, gathering connection information and connecting from the iPad to the Bluetooth device on the bike itself. And then yeah, here you go. Are you using the sprinter switch? Yeah, I'm using that. Are you using that? Yeah, I'm using the sprint ship, sprint switch. And then, of course, it's going to go back to the very beginning here. And customize, update firmware, error check, or check my presets. And again, presets. You can create these. Um, 
go to the unit list. You can see your master unit. You can see all the pieces that are attached to the system. Uh, there is a tutorial on here for those of you who are looking for a little bit of help. There's some application settings, uh, which you can go through. Language settings and Bluetooth settings as well. Um, there's a pass key on here, which you can change and all that kind of stuff. So uh, you can even, also worth noting, you can check your battery status right there if you're really not sure about your battery. But really, really awesome handy tool. So just a quick, uh, quick tutorial on how to use the Shimano eTube app on the iPad. Hope this was very helpful for you. Again, check out tailwind-coaching.com slash Shimano B-T-L-E if you want a little bit more of information on this, on some of the components, where you can find them, things like that. Thanks for listening, guys. Any comments, questions, or anything, you can shoot them to me on the website. I hope to talk to you soon. Have a great ride, guys.